Good afternoon, everybody. It is your friend and pal, Chop It On, coming at you with another episode of Chop Talk, brought to you by the one, the only, DFSArmy.com, your one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy sports. All sports represented from NFL to MLB to PGA, MMA, college football now. NBA will be around the corner. College football kicks off tonight, guys. Are you excited or what? I know I am. Well, I shouldn't say I'm excited for the DFS side of it. I'm not excited for the college football season because, to be honest with you, I'm a Jayhawk, so we suck. And I, I don't watch a lot of college football when it comes to my own team. I spend more of my time watching your team and you guys, in the, especially in the southeast United States, that, that really love, get really hammed and amped up for this time of year. It's awesome. And it's awesome that DraftKings and FanDuel, FanDuel released slates today that both sites now have college football covered and so we're covering it inside dfsarmy.com what you need to do is you need to click the link in the comments section down below become a vip today start reading the articles start playing with the tools mess around with the optimizers create yourself some lineups some custom lineups because we don't sell lineups here we don't give lineups away we coach you in the fundamentals of what it takes to make winning lineups and if you've seen our track record all you got to do is come up here to the wall of wins Click on that bad boy and see our track record from $250,000 to $150,000 winners to guys that have just done it in football and NBA. All the sports that we cover, we have guys that win. And it's just simply, it's not all volume. It's not all, hey, they entered 500 lineups. There is a strict method to mass multi-entering that we teach. There is also the idea that with the coaching and the tools and everything else we put it in place because if that if, if it was strictly volume that was winning then your great big sites would be kicking ass and how come our helmets are all over the leaderboards we must be doing something right so you need to come in you need to check us out use the coupon code chop chop trigger that 10 percent off discount because friends don't let friends pay retail. And let's dive in to the DraftKings side of things. We've done a couple of FanDuel ones with quarterbacks and wide and running backs. If you look through my YouTube videos, my channel, you'll see recently we did a couple of those. Walk through those. I'm showing you how to find the elite plays of the week. The, the chalky, the best scenarios. And a lot of you guys can do that out there on your own. But what we've done is created a little bit of a one-stop shop that pulls in all of those numbers into one place. And you can filter things out piece by piece by piece, narrow down your player pool in a very quick fashion instead of having to run to this site, that site, this site, that site, and figure it all out on your own. Then we can talk about it inside Slack channels as VIPs, and we can discuss which plays are good, which plays are bad, which are chalky, which are contrarian pivots, all that good stuff to help you build the type of lineup that you're trying to build, whether it be cash games or whether it be tournaments or whatever. That's what we're here to help you do. Become a better DFS player. If you don't know anything about football, don't worry about it. I was there three, four years ago myself. So we can help anybody from the brand newest guy to the elite. Just by talking, group think is a good thing. Let's dive in to the wide receiver portion. There's the quarterbacks tab, there's the running backs tab. Let's click over to the wide receiver tab because being a full PPR site, DraftKings puts a little bit more value on some different guys. Jarvis Landry, value rises. Larry Fitzgerald, value rises. Uh, Adam Thielen, value rises. Slot guys like Emmanuel Sanders, value rises. These types of guys do a little bit better when they get a ton of targets thrown at them. Well, how do we find that out? We scroll over to the target section because we've seen all, all of the different parameters. If you watch the quarterbacks and watch the running backs, you can see we're focused on home teams, we're focused on favorites, we're focused on high implied teams, and none of that goes away. Well, except in the wide receiver category, the home team goes away. Don't care about that anymore. Because oftentimes the road team is the underdog, and the road team, when he's getting blown out, and the home team is just running the ball down their throat and running the clock out, the, the away team is throwing the ball like crazy. They're chucking it right and left in that garbage time. And that's when the wide receiver benefits. The quarterback, not so much. He does a little. But it's the wide receiver that benefits the most, especially a high target wide receiver because we fall into a prevent defense, let the guy run underneath all day long, slot receivers go crazy, booyah. Points. And that's the name of the game on DraftKings especially. You don't need as much in the touchdowns. Touchdowns help, but you need targets. So let's scroll over. You need them on FanDuel too, but you need them more on DraftKings. Let's scroll over at different columns here, fantasy points, Vegas lines, projections, 2017 stats. That's where we want to go. A little bit of against the defense and then red zone numbers. We're wanting guys that are active in the red zone and are getting a lot of targets per game in general. So if I go to the 2017 stats and filter out the targets by game, let's just do by descending order. And we're going to have to make that greater than 1. 
because when this stuff talks to you, but these are just ways that we figure out these are just ways that we figure out how to manipulate this tool and help us out. Targets per game, we can come all the way down to guys getting three, four, whatever targets per game. But, you, you know, those are hopefully those are guys that are just running deep routes. But look at who leads the league. Antonio Brown, DeAndre, Odell Beckham, Jarvis, Fitzgerald, Keenan Allen. Just getting balls thrown at them right and left. So we want those guys largely on our team. Now, what we're going to look at is who of these guys are in the best spots. So the first thing I'm going to do is there's a magic number in targets per game of eight. Receivers that get eight targets per game, eight opportunities per game, have the best chance at hitting value. Do they do it every time? No. But I don't know. I don't remember what it was. 50, 60, 75 percent chance at hitting value or scoring you know, X number of points. And of course, if their salary is low enough, then they're hitting value. What I'm going to do is further filter this. Instead of greater than one, let's go greater than seven. Let's see who, oh, let's only deal with the guys that hit the magic threshold of eight. So it looks like sevens are included. That's fine. I could have done 7.5 or whatever, but let's deal with the guys that are eight or higher, maybe a little bit of a threshold because these guys obviously had games where they had more than seven targets because this is an average. And let's scroll over now and let's look at who is active in the red zone because that's what's next. Who gets targets inside the 20? Looky there. Quite a bit of these guys. Maybe not the bottom part of the list except for all the way down here, Crabtree. Crabtree got himself some red zone targets. Devontae Parker got him some red zone targets. You know, more so than a Pierre Garçon or a D.D. Westbrook. And maybe their situation changes this year. This is last year's numbers. We look at even who, who even got a little bit deeper inside the 10. Who's being thrown at on the goal line? Crabtree still up there. Keenan Allen up there. Jarvis Landry. Look at that. 14 targets. I know he switched offenses, but Cleveland picked him up for a reason. 10 and 10 for Hopkins and, uh, and oh, 10, Antonio Brown. 10 targets inside the 10 is outstanding considering he's got Le'Veon Bell in there with him. So these are guys we're going to want to use. We would check the box for eight plus targets. We would check the box for red zone work, right? We're going to scroll back over here. We're going to look at a couple of things. We talked about uh, home team and road team. So we don't really need to care all that much about if you're home or not. But there is one little trick in this, road dogs. If you are a road underdog, so I would take this spread and I would make it greater than one. Well, greater than zero, because if you're 0.5, I'll take it. You're technically a road dog. These are your road dogs, or well, your dogs. These are your road dogs in white, yellow teams in home. So DeAndre Hopkins is in a great spot, better spot on paper than maybe Antonio Brown this week. Doesn't mean Antonio Brown won't have a good game. It just means that DeAndre Hopkins in this situation is going to hit his value more often then Antonio Brown's going to hit his value in his situation. That's all that means. And that's a big leap for people to make in their heads. I'm not saying DeAndre Hopkins is a better receiver. I'm saying that with him being on the road in an underdog situation, he is more likely to hit his value than Antonio Brown is if we put Antonio Brown in Cleveland and DeAndre Hopkins in New England, say... 20 times. Antonio Brown's not going to hit his value as often. He's still going to have monster games. He's still going to have an outlier game or two bad and an outlier game or two great. We just don't know which one that's going to happen on week one. We just know that we're playing the odds. We're stacking the odds in our favor, and DeAndre Hopkins might be the best receiver on the board of the top-tier high-priced dudes. Mike Evans, also great spot. A.J. Green, great spot. Sterling Shepard, nope, that's New York. Pierre Garçon, good spot. Doug Baldwin, if his knee feels better, good spot. What we're looking for, again, is these road dogs. That's what we want to see. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is by game total. So if I clear this one off, and we go to the implied team total. If you know how to run implied team totals, you know that there are a few thresholds here. We'll talk about them more in tight ends and defenses and things, but with running backs, we were already talking about uh, you know maybe a, a heavy favorite of more than say six points with quarterbacks we were definitely looking for high team totals of over 24 points over 26 points showing us that the game should be high scoring and we can target that quarterback successfully because again 
out of 20 times, he's going to hit his value more often than if his team total was, say, 16. I mean, that's pretty common sense, isn't it? That's all we're trying to do is show you the common sense way to filter out all these numbers. When I scroll down or look down this board, the team total I want is I want it under 18 or over 27. Those are typically when the monster performances happen. Why under 18? I don't know. Maybe it's because the offense sucks so bad that that's the only thing they got. Maybe it's because they're the road dog and they're going to get a lot of garbage time. I know that in that scenario, some Robbie Anderson last year popped in there for the Jets. Um, you know, I, I just, these are the situations where these things do pop up. Now I have to find the column again because nobody's in that scenario this week. So instead of going under 18, since we know that's not going to work, let's go greater than 26, say 0.5, because we want greater than 27. We've only got one Michael Thomas that's in a high, high, high implied total game that is, well, he's at home. He's not even a road dog. So we don't have anyone checking all of the boxes this week. So let's say we gave each box a check mark. Um, eight plus targets, check. Red zone work, check. Uh, road dog, check. Under 18, check. Over 27, check. We're not going to have anybody check every single box this week in week one. If I wanted to sort that down just a smidge more and say call it 25 to bring in some guys who are on the higher implied total teams, now i got a list of three or four. So we're going to have to pick some subpar guys. We don't have anyone that's really smashing across the board. We're going to have good performances, don't get me wrong, but we don't have anybody who's just smashing across the board. These would be the guys that I'd be looking to. Apparently, the Houston uh, Texans are not supposed to score 26 points against the New England Patriots, but DeAndre Hopkins is still in a great spot. But Antonio Brown all of a sudden hits the list. Interesting that he he's a favorite. That's why he didn't hit the road dog list. He's on the road. He's in a high implied total game. They're favored on the road, though. Uh, Keenan Allen, Michael Thomas, Adam Thielen. Those are the guys. Those are about four or five receivers that we're looking to most this week in week one. And that's fine. That works. You want to look for sub-value plays and really start digging down. What you can do is you can take this DraftKings salary and say go below you know, 7,500. Is there anybody getting eight-plus targets? Because we already filtered by that. Under 7,500. Sure is. Beckham, Landry, Fitzgerald. Let's go, well, under 7,000. Let's go a little lower than that. Let's look for some deeper value. Less than, say, 6,000. Boom. There's my list of value receivers. These guys were all getting over eight targets per game or over seven targets per game right? You might look at these guys and let's check some more boxes. You might look at who's facing a weak defense that was weak against the pass. We have some correlation charts coming out, correlation um, matrices coming out that are player specific that are going to mention Jarvis Landry runs up against, you know, uh, you know, whoever cornerback and that cornerback gave up X number of points per game. And Jarvis Landry is also correlated with his quarterback at say a 1.8 or something as opposed to a negative correlation. And those are going to be things that are just still going to throw arrows pointing upward in favor of these guys and help us sift through and find the best plays of the best plays. It's also going to be just like I do with my baseball videos when I have a five-star offense, four-star offense, three-star offense. In a lot of cases, you get down there, guys still are in okay spots. They're not in an okay spot across the board, but they still – have a couple of good strong indicators pointing in their direction and so they become GPP guys meaning that if they do well it won't be surprising it's just not doing so well across all of the categories that we might consider them safe for cash that makes sense this is just stuff that we talk about inside the army hopefully you're getting a little bit out of this and you can see some of these lists that we're starting to build and we're sh and I'm showing you how to do that with the filters inside the the research station. This is accessible to all of our VIPs. Become a VIP, open this whole thing up, play with it yourself, learn what these numbers are. We've got the creators working on a tutorial that is going to explain every single column of this thing, every single page, every single tab, exactly how to use it, and you're going to get to watch that 
as a VIP as well. So I'm just poking through it on my own because I learned with baseball how to do it a little bit. I'm excited for football. I hope you are too. This will kind of wrap up the wide receiver portion of things, but there's going to be things that are going to change throughout the week. You know, we've got, what, week four preseason, and then we'll have a whole week leading up of a bunch of talking. So hopefully you guys tune back in, subscribe to my channel. I'll get you the videos as soon as I can about what, where we're going to go and how we're going to pare down these lists, how we're going to create player pools and whatnot. I won't get too fancy. I save a lot of that for my VIPs and the question and answer, but going back and forth when those guys are asking me questions, I give you everything that I have inside my brain. I give you all of the powers that I have, and I'm not saying I'm Albert Einstein and some genius, but I will give you access to every single thing I have. I hold nothing back. I'm not one of those guys that keeps the best place for myself. I absolutely tell you everything that is on my mind, everything that I have learned through the few years of playing daily fantasy sports, hoping to make you a better player too, because that's what's going to make you a long-term VIP. My mind's focused on the end game, not today's dollar. It's focused on becoming a bigger site, a better site, a more competitive, more household site, so that you guys understand that we're a brand that you can trust. You jump in, you join the army, you latch onto us, hook your wagon up to our train, and we'll hopefully pull you across a few finish lines. This has been Chop Adong. This has been Chop Talk. Click that link in the bottom of the comment section. Become a VIP today. Don't forget to use coupon code CHOP, and hopefully I'm talking to you tomorrow on the inside. Take care.